Here's a constitutional remedy. Those homes sold in 1950 for $100,000. Today they sell for $500,000. Take uh, I know, the San Francisco Bay Area, 10% um, of the population uh, is African American today. The next 10% of the homes that come up for sale in Milpitas, say, should be purchased by the federal government for $500,000 or whatever they cost in the market, and then resold to qualified African Americans for $100,000. That would be a constitutionally required remedy, narrowly targeted to the violation that, that, you know, that I was committed. I, I support gentrification. I think every community should be gentrified, including the most affluent suburbs. What that means is what we need to aspire to is metropolitan areas in which every community is diverse economically. Um, so why are African Americans in this area, when they're being forced out of um, their previous neighborhoods, going to places only like Antioch and only like Pittsburgh? The reason is because they are still excluded from, they shouldn't be moving to just some suburbs. We should have opportunities in every community for people who are leaving urban areas, and we should be controlling the gentrification so, as you say, uh, there will be remaining opportunities for low and moderate income people to live in those communities. So we need both, uh, you're, you're all familiar with this termination, we need both the prohibition of exclusionary zoning laws, and we need inclusionary zoning requirements in um, every uh, community in the country. The federal government, you know, still, uh, and, and uh, Carolyn mentioned this, this earlier in the introduction, the federal government still reinforces the segregation that it created. The federal government reinforces the segregation through two policies. One, and, and now I'm talking about things that you know more about than I do, I imagine. One is the low-income housing tax credit program, and the other is the housing choice voucher program. Uh, the low-income housing tax credit program gives subsidies, gives tax subsidies to developers who build low and, uh, it should be low and moderate income, but most of them build just low income housing. And the Housing Choice Voucher Program, popularly known as Section 8, gives subsidies to um, uh, families to enable them to, to uh, rent apartments at rents they otherwise couldn't afford. But the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program is used predominantly to place new developments for low income families in already segregated neighborhoods. That should be prohibited. Far short of the big program I talked about before, where the federal government buys up 10% of all the, the affluent homes and resells them at discounts to African Americans, that's an immediate policy we could implement. We could prohibit the use of the low-income housing tax credit program in uh, already segregated low-income communities and require that they be built in high-opportunity areas. The second, uh, so far as the Housing Choice Voucher Program, that also is used predominantly to reinforce segregation because most housing choice vouchers are used in already segregated neighborhoods. Housing choice vouchers is not a, um, the Section 8 program, it's not an entitlement. So we have long waiting lists uh, for those programs. There are some communities that have begun to have what mobility programs that give a preference to families, Section 8 housing voucher families, who are willing to use those vouchers in high opportunity neighborhoods and that requires providing more social supports and other supporting services to enable them to do that but we could make that a nationwide policy there are so many the waiting lists are so long for section 8 vouchers that we could easily restrict them only to families who are willing to use them to desegregate um, so those are two policies that uh, as i say could be changed immediately without going as far as george romney's or as my crazy ideas